I'd now like to introduce our next speaker, Kent Lewis. Kent is the president of Anvil Media, a search engine marketing agency specializing in search engine optimization, pay-per-click management, search engine mar marketing public relations, online reputation management, and social media marketing services. Kent is one of the most sought after experts on a broad array of search engine marketing services. He speaks across the nation at an average of 40 to 60 engagements a year. He will share with us the latest trends in this dynamic industry, leaving each of you with the five things you can do immediately that will yield the highest returns for your energy and money in this adapt or die digital industry. Please welcome Kent Lewis. Thank you. So I'm sorry I don't actually have any, uh, uh, any of my favorite TV show analogies to, to show you today. Um, but I am going to talk about uh, five digital marketing strategies uh, that you can adapt to or you can not. Um, my digital background is a couple different agencies, some nonprofits, and a lot of teaching. But let's talk about the good stuff. So. Uh, for starters, we're going to talk about search engine optimization, SEO, and uh, what Google's been doing with the latest Penguin and Panda updates. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's not the zoo. Okay. I know one guy in e-commerce that knows. Um, media maximization, aka video, which is uh, a, a booming uh, trend in digital, mobile, uh, social, and marketing automation. So let's get started with uh, Penguin proofing. So. Um, for those of you that have a website that has either a lot of advertising or a lot of garbage content on it, in the last month or two, you may have noticed your, your rankings have taken a dive, your traffic's gone down. Um, that's because Google is desperately trying to fight spam and bad content and bad experience. So uh, with that said, um, you can rank well in, in um, I guess I'll stand up here, why not? Um, you can rank well in Google, and uh, the strategies that we've developed at Anvil and Formic haven't changed since I uh, started optimizing websites in 96, which as I recall is about a month or two after Al Gore invented the internet. So um, I was there at ground zero. Uh, so good content is any sort of text um, or imagery or video that is relevant to your business and the solutions you provide. But then you have to wrap it in some sort of code, usually HTML, and now HTML5 is sort of the latest and greatest, and that's what will really help you rank. Uh, if you use JavaScript or Flash and other elements, you can trip up Google, or Google may de determine that they're lazy or they don't like you, and your content, no matter how brilliant, won't get indexed. But most importantly, 80% or so of the algorithmic elements of what gets you to the top of Google for any given search phrase is the, co the code or the credibility element, which is who's linking to you, how credible are those sites, how long has your domain been around, when will it expire, uh, where is it being hosted? How fast is your site download? So all the credibility factors are really a majority. And of these three, it's the hardest thing to fake, right? It's hard to fake credibility. Um, unlike your citizenship, it's, it's difficult to buy. So um, what is going on in terms of how is Google ranking your website today? A little crash course. Page level link metrics mean simply who is linking to this individual page on your website. So not the entire domain or, or URL, but the actual specific page. So you actually have to have inbound links throughout your website. The natural ranking um, organic look is that Google decides that it, you have links throughout, which is how a normal site would be, uh, uh, a good site would have links throughout. Uh, a site that's being um, gamed or, or that's uh, spammy will have a lot of links to just one page of site and nowhere else. Um, so the domain level is a uh, link authority is important. So um, if you sell lawnmowers, you better have links from lawnmower related sites through from not just to your homepage, but throughout the site. So um, page and then domain. And then lastly, yes, you do have in the top three, you do have to actually have the keywords. Uh, say 15% of the uh, ranking or weighting is on the actual keyword usage and not tons of keywords, not stuffing the pages with a bunch of garbage uh, keywords, but just enough that Google understands what you're saying. And at a domain level as well, you need to have those keywords. So I worked, I had the pleasure of working with a company, World Class Driving, that have, you can drive exotic cars. Uh, one of my friends, two of, two of these guys, Trey and Barry, have gone with me up to Bellingham to drive exotic cars. Um, they wanted to rank for, they called me and said, why aren't we ranking for exotic cars? Canada is like 
there is, your word Canada does not appear anywhere on your websites. There's no way that you're going to rank for it. So you actually have to create content around Canadian supercar, Grand Tour sort of things, and any of the individual cars. But more importantly, where, uh, where is the algorithm going, going to go, and how can you anticipate making sure that you're ranking both today and, and beyond? And the orange stands for what is going to be increasingly important in the algorithm, and this is decreasingly important. So in the old days, it's all about does the, is the keyword in your domain? Can you keyword stuff the Jesus out of your website and the, and the URL itself? And, that is, um, and can you buy links to influence credibility? That's all going away. Where it's going is actually, I'll start down here, um, usage data. So of the, of the rankings that you are appearing for in Google, um, how many people are clicking on those rankings? So click-through rate on your organic versus your paid search, uh, as well as bounce rates. When they hit your site, are they leaving immediately or are they sticking around? Because Google knows a lot of that through Google Analytics. Um, and then there's um, other factors like page load time and, and stuff like that. Um, most, more importantly, social signals, so mentions, um, it, links from Twitter, Facebook, uh, and other social profiles, are they linking to specific pages or mentioning pages or mentioning your domain at all? In social, that's really important. Um, do you have the shareability on your website to share this on Twitter, share this on Facebook? Um, but the scary part is Google's getting into this highly subjective world of are you creating a good user experience? So our customer, are your visitors actually finding value in your site? So the trick is going to be to figure out how is Google determining if users are finding value? I mean, beyond maybe reviews and ratings on your site or on third-party sites, how do they really know? So beyond the actual bounce rates and time on site, uh, I'm actually not totally sure how this is going to play out. So you have to, we're going to be spending a lot of time here um, at Anvil and Fork trying to anticipate. But the way I would say it is if you work with folks like iSight or Eroy on a good user experience, that's what Google is chasing. So you don't have to outthink Google. You just have to create a good user experience. And it's always been that way. Our clients don't get penalized when Google makes updates because we do good marketing. And that's all you need to do. So next step is video. And I want to mention this because it is the highest life form on the internet in terms of media uh, format. Because with one HD video, you can, you can have a video that's a great storytelling vehicle. But you can also have uh, turn that into um, high-res photographs or images, stills from the video at any, any point in your video, create images. And then you can also strip out the audio and have a podcast, put it up on iTunes, where there's almost a billion downloads a month. Um, which is uh, more users than there are on Facebook. And I don't know how many of you have a podcast strategy, but you should be thinking about that. And then last but not least is text. You can have your videos for very cheaply transcripted to create good content for SEO. I have a friend of mine that did a two-hour workshop, had somebody videotape it, had it transcribed for $180, turned it, formatted it into an ebook, put it up on Amazon, and it's a best-selling Kindle book now for his specific niche industry. And that was a couple hundred bucks worth of effort and utilizing content that he had already generated. So there are a lot of ways to leverage video. But the most important fact is that at 30 frames a second, a 30 second video is worth a million words. If, one, if a picture is worth a thousand words, you can do the math there. So um, with just a very short video, you can do amazing storytelling. And um, you know, this is an example. One of our clients is um, uh, Marine Max, the largest um, marine dealership in the world out of Florida. And you know, the idea here is that you know, people, there are people out there that use YouTube, uh, which is the second largest search engine by volume, as their sole search engine. They don't use Bing, Yahoo, or Google as a search engine. They go straight to Yahoo. So your question is, what is your Yahoo strategy? For uh, Marine Max, it's creating a 30 to 90 second video for every single product that they sell, from a 20 footer to a 200 foot yacht. Um, if you think about that, you can show more whiz bang and features in a video than you ever could ever describe with images and text. So um, the question is, what is your YouTube strategy? Well, it should be to build your own television channel. You have your own cable channel where you can have advertorial, so pure advertisements like here's our new sales materials all the way to infomercial sort of edutainment, which is um, kind of this whole um, interviews, news, and trends. You can, on the sales side, moving down the funnel, you can do demos, seminars, um, share your customer uh, success stories. Um, and then even customer service and support. All those common questions, you have somebody ask it, somebody answer it. You could do it in a variety of formats. Um, Cisco, just, a, just a, an example, 
um, has a completely custom channel with its own navigation, tons of content. Um, they have the funding, they have the resources. It makes a lot of sense for them. It may not work for everybody, but it's really not that hard um, to create that channel. We're working with, uh, partnering with a company here in town called Spirit Media, and we're doing uh, customer testimonials, taping all those, glossing those out. We're doing a reel with animation, voiceover, all of that, um, because as thought leaders, we have to walk our talk. You can do the same thing, and it's not uh, inappropriately uh, expensive. In fact, with a $100 flip, if they still made those, or equivalent, you can do HD camcorder interviews with your team or clients or customers out in the field, upload those quickly. Uh, it's an easy game. So uh, number three is mobile. So uh, I don't know how many of you have a mobile phone. OK, right. So anybody here not have a mobile phone? Anybody here not have a smartphone? Just has an old school flip phone? or whatever, brick phone, Motorola, OK. So the, 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 what's interesting about mobile, it, obviously, it's one of the most effective marketing. I'll go over here now to mix it up, give some love. Uh, how's it going, Barry? All right. So um, it's obviously all of these things. It just sits in your pocket, and boom, it rings or vibrates whenever we want to talk to you as marketers. Um, interestingly, a variety of, a lot of folks use text, um, a lot of photo sharing, a lot of email. A lot of activities, hopefully your business plays somewhere in here. Notice nobody seems to be actually talking on their phone. Kind of interesting. So uh, this complicated infographic is just a reminder that um, when you think TV advertising, which is this outer ring uh, households with at least one television, um, is a big audience, think about text messaging, which vastly eclipses the television market. And smartphones are now 50% or more than 50% of the market. So you're getting massive coverage with a mobile marketing strategy. How many of you have a mobile strategy of some sort? OK, so you're all dialed in. Good. So uh, the first place to start is mobilizing your website, making sure that when you view it on your phone that you don't need a monocle, a loop, that you're a jeweler to see that website. So um, we built our website in WordPress, which means um, there's an automatic plugin that you can um, dial in, which creates, renders a, a mobile and a tablet version of the site that's easy to use, easy to navigate, and it makes you look super sharp. And then you can turn it off if you're an idiot and have a very small version of your site. Um, and so you can use your cocaine pinky to navigate uh, using right up here. So, um, so start there. So you can build it, port it into WordPress. You can have somebody custom build a mobile site. Uh, but it, by and large, this is the easiest, cheapest way to do it. Number four is uh, social media and the concept of the evangelist. I, I wrote an article about this, um, uh, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But I, I wanted to reiterate that there, there are five basic uh, reasons to engage in social media. And how many of you have some sort of company social presence? YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, something. OK. So, um, but the most common mistake is you're not starting with the greatest benefit of social, which is it's the world's largest focus group. So your customers, your prospects, and your competitors are telling you through social media how to build a better business, how to build better products. Uh, down here, does anybody know what this is? Uh, this is a genus. It's uh, built, made by Leatherman Tool. Um, uh, they came in the market about four plus years ago, and this is their Skeletool. These came out at the same time. So four years ago, back when you guys didn't know what Twitter was, most of you, um, I was asked to go in and talk to them about how can Leatherman Tool get involved in social media? What do they need to know? And I spent a good solid 45 minutes of my life preparing for that presentation. And um, it did, that's the beauty is you can hit these profiles, do quick searches on keywords like Leatherman, Leatherman Tool. And uh, I found a lot of interesting insights. And I went and presented information to them that they did not know yet, which, number one, unfortunately, this is black and white. But when this came out in the blister pack, it was a um, green and blue handle, which looked great to the designers, but nobody apparently had walked through Home Depot and noticed that the color of handles on um, gardening implements is what color or colors? Anybody? Orange, yellow. So I went out, it took me two seconds to find out that when you color uh, your uh, gardening implements in camouflage, that when you put it down, you can't find it. So uh, I told them that. They didn't know it yet. Um, I also told them that this spring, um, if your audience, which is this is an older audience than they're used to, most gardeners, I would, I'm guessing, are over 50, maybe skewed female. Well, this spring is very, very stiff, apparently, and a woman with mild arthritis wrote in a blog that she couldn't use it. It was like, I, I just don't have the strength. So they needed to loosen that up a little bit, make that a little more relevant to their audience. So 
customers evolving products. But the best story is the Skeletool, which is that uh, you notice here they have some really cool holes to lighten the weight, give it a badass look, you know, so when you're carrying it on your little side pouch, you look super badass instead of nerdy. Um, so this was a big deal from a design perspective, uh, but they missed a huge opportunity that an electrician, not Joe, pointed out um, that was out on a job site, and you can call BS, but this is what I recall from this, uh, it was a forum, an uh, uh, electrical engineering forum that happened, a keyword match, so I found it, uh, was that he was out on a job site, he didn't have his tools with him, he needed to get into a junction box, and he's like, I'll be damned if I had this tool, and if this was just hexagonal shaped, I would have had a box wrench and I could have gotten in there. So if you count that up briefly, that's four or five more tools to add with just by changing the shape of the holes. On a multi-tool that's maybe eight tools, you, you're at increasing by 40% number of tool features. Um, that's pretty impressive. Kind of like when you have a 10 speed and one of the speeds is stop, that sort of thing. So um, customer service is the other one. I don't know how many of you actually are actively out on Twitter and other social pro, uh, platforms monitoring and doing customer service to your customer service teams. So they should be. And there are, there are tools that you can use that plug into your customer service platform to treat a comment on Twitter just like a trouble ticket, like it's a phone call or an inbound email. So um, be doing that because it's not only is it more affordable, but there are, the research shows that if you do not, most people over 50 expect you as a brand to respond when they complain on Twitter. Um, people under 24 really don't think you're capable of doing that. Uh, they have low expectation. But if you don't respond and somebody's complaining about your products or services, they're about 89% likely to walk away as a customer. Um, they're a lot or a lot, uh, they're a little or a lot less likely to purchase again. So you cannot afford to ignore social media. Uh, next concept would be that yes, you can market with social. That's what everybody that like Ryan and I, you keep hearing like, oh my God, I got to market on social media. It's not totally what we're saying. We're saying if you're going to do it, please do it well. Uh, we like the thought leadership approach. You guys are creating content that gets people thinking. So um, some of you are doing that exceptionally well. Research reports, studies, um, uh, interviews with thought leaders, that sort of thing. And last but not least, uh, for some of our clients, you uh, are doing a pretty good job actually selling product on social media. Our hotel clients like Lucia and Deluxe are actually uh, moving product through the social channel, booking rooms and so forth. You can do the same. Uh, one last quick point here on social. Uh, how many of you have a social media manager? So the problem with that is that they're tactical, they're probably uh, four years or less out of college, and you hired them because they get social media, but they don't know your business, they don't know your culture, they don't know your story, not intimately. Um, they're very tactical, uh, they're an implementer, they do all the voice out, um, you know, some monitoring. Um, yeah, I'm staying on top of social, I go to a conference a year, that sort of thing. What they should be doing, what you should be doing is turning them into an evangelist or hiring somebody that is the cheerleader that has more management and leadership experience than social media experience, that is the strategic thinker that's managing, that's inspiring, that empowers everybody in your company to have a voice in social media and provides the training and the leadership to do that, um, even if that means working outside of uh, that space. And I've written articles you can check about on that. The last point um, I want to make on social is that you should be measuring relative data relationships between the, your raw numbers like total followers or fans and then engagement metrics like comments, posts, replies, and so forth. I've written an article on this. You can check it out. We're short on time. And the last point I want to make is on marketing automation, that last mile. Um, folks like, uh, you know, we, we at Anvil Informic, we like to generate leads for you guys, but if you don't have a sales engine that's converting those into leads and sales, we're, we are still held accountable and we don't succeed. So here's some compelling stats on why social isn't working. Uh, I mean, why um, marketing automation is needed is the leads are either bad, they're coming or whatever. Um, so what you need to do is create a conversation. This is something that Eroy uh, does uh, pretty well. Um, is develop a strategy to nurture your leads. Um, these are some of the players. So um, in short, optimize your site, get your video program up to date, get your mobile program in, engaged, create an evangelism role in, within social, and automate your marketing. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Kent.